Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Katlero. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to another video. Today, we're back. Like I said, we are doing an updated video that I've done in the past called Best and Worst Things About environmental sciences so i did this video i think back in 2021 when i was doing my second year msc so that was from the perspective of a student i am doing this updated one from the perspective of a graduate as somebody who's graduated and now i'm looking back and i'm like what are actually the best and worst things about this field because i've like done a little bit of work in the field now i'm looking a little bit from the outside and maybe as somebody who's trying to dip their toes back in what do i like about it and what do i not like about it without wasting any time let's get into the video i changed the light to blue because you know what i'm going to start with i'm going to start with the worst things because i want to end on a good note i want to end on a hopeful note so let's get the worst things out of the way and i have my notes over here so i'm gonna be looking at them from time to time number one worst thing about studying or doing or being a graduate in this field environmental sciences is that it's a very broad field and it has an overwhelming scope what i mean is environmental sciences is very broad and it can feel very hard to find a clear path for yourself you might graduate knowing a little bit of everything Thing, but also feel like you don't really know anything like you might not feel like an expert in any of the fields that you studied for example i took courses in animal behavior sustainability biogeography climate change but i don't think i would call myself an expert in any of those fields it's like that saying a jack of all trade but a master of none which is why it's very important to specialize so you well versed in a certain field within environmental sciences number two worst thing is that there's a lack of standardization between institutions i touched on this a little bit in my previous video basically what i mean is environmental science programs vary from institution to institution some are focused more on science and some are focused on policy or management this creates a lot of confusion when applying for environmental science jobs because oftentimes titles of the job they might be looking for environmental manager but you're like i studied environmental sciences so there's a lot of confusion because of a lack of standardization within environmental sciences in institutions number three environmental sciences is highly interdisciplinary it combines different disciplines and oftentimes you're expected to understand those different disciplines even if you might not have studied them for example if you're reading an environmental science paper whether conservation or biodiversity you're reading a scientific paper on wildlife economy you're expected to know economics sometimes you're expected to know law you're expected to also know biology geography chemistry for example it can feel overwhelming and you can feel academically inadequate because you're like i don't know economics why am i supposed to know economics i'm studying environmental sciences so it's very interdisciplinary and that can be a con you can feel like you're constantly trying to catch up in certain fields or you're lacking depth in certain fields just because it combines so many different fields at the same time number four there's an inconsistent career path <laughs> so if you're studying environmental sciences unlike medicine or law there's no set trajectory for your career you have to build your own path through experience, through networking, and through continuous learning. So early on in your career, it is common to have short-term contracts, to freelance, to like dip your toes here or there or whatever until you figure out this is where I want to go and this is how I'm going to get there and these are the networking opportunities I've had or these are the contacts I have, etc, etc. For that reason, it's a little bit frustrating. Know this <laughs> as an environmental science graduate or student or anybody 
somebody who's interested to come into the field next disadvantage is that it has a very competitive job market and a lot of the times it's a little bit vague entry-level jobs require extensive experience which still does not make sense to me to be honest and they're usually not well paid entry-level positions are not well paid full transparency when i was doing my internship at tenby i earned ten thousand rands as a master's graduate <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 rand is absolutely nothing like once you've paid rent because obviously I'm not living at home I have to pay rent I have to have transport to go to work I have to have internet obviously I have to eat yeah you can't live too far from work because then it increases transport costs you're also taking into account safety in terms of the place you want to live yeah and I feel like something needs to change because everything is expensive anyway some of the times roles that feel very meaningful like conservation roles pay less than private roles or pay less than sustainability roles or roles in the private sector sometimes you feel like i really love this job i really like conservation but how am i gonna put food on the table with this job i might as well go the private route next is that there is a limited representation and understanding i'm going to start with family so if somebody close to you a friend a family member an acquaintance Tens ask you what did you study in your like environmental sciences they like what so do you know what this plant is there's a lack of understanding in terms of what environmental sciences actually entails so a lot of the times you will find yourself explaining to people what it is that you studied and what it means and how it can be practically applied to a job so you have to justify your degree which is not fun <laughs> next there is limited funding and resources in environmental sciences some programs like laboratory or technical resources compared to other stem fields so sometimes you will go to an institution and you'll find if you're in the engineering department they have so much stuff they have things that student can go and learn about and actually touch and interact with and then you go to an environmental science department and they don't really have the lab equipment they don't really have the funding to go on field trips they're just lacking in resources so that's quite sad and research and field work opportunities are highly dependent on external funding which is also quite competitive if you're looking for funding to do research projects even if you're working but you're looking for funding to do a certain research project Project, it's very competitive to get funding you might feel like your project is for a good cause or it's more meaningful but at the end of the day it's a competition some people will get the money and you might not there is limited funding for students which is a very very big deal something i realized as a student when you're looking for funding opportunities online you'll find funding for engineering medicine dentistry law science and it's like all the other disciplines within science but you don't find anything that applies to environmental sciences do we just not have funding what's going on so there is a lot of limited funding for this field lastly in the worst things category we have greenwashing and frustration with the real world implementation so when you're working within environmental sectors this can expose you to a lot of greenwashing and tokenism in sustainability efforts a lot of the things that are regarded as green are not really green they do not help at all a company might have this whole green project that they're launching but they never stick to their promises they don't commit they don't commit so it exposes you to a lot of that if you get a chance to work in the field you will start to realize and get disappointed <laughs> with the slow progress in government and corporate responsibilities a lot of the times projects that that are launched are not really that quick and you cannot see the returns that quickly things take forever to get approved to launch to actually get moving you will work on a project and you might even leave a company without that project having gotten off the ground <laughs> 
Okay, let's move on to the best things. We are highly disappointed. Let's let's get a pick me up. Best things about environmental sciences. It's an interdisciplinary field. So interdisciplinary learning. It combines biology, geography, chemistry, policy, climate change, etc. Many many things. So you develop a holistic understanding on environmental systems, which is valuable in many fields. The interdisciplinary nature of environmental sciences is a good and a bad thing. In this case, it's a good thing to know a lot of stuff because it means you can work in a lot of sectors you have a lot more knowledge compared to somebody who just knows one thing and that interdisciplinary nature of this field encourages critical thinking from multiple angles so you think from a science perspective you think from an economics perspective a social perspective perspective etc so i think that is one of the skills i've learned and honed over the couple of years that even now as an ESL teacher the critical thinking I learned from my degrees has helped me so much because when I encounter a problem I do not only look at it in one way I think of it in many different ways how can I solve this problem that is one of the most valuable skills I've learned you learn transferable skills speaking of skills you gain a lot of research skills writing skills data analysis skills communication skills teamwork skills and because it's such an interdisciplinary field there's a lot of interdisciplinary collaboration with other fields this is core to the field of course so all of these skills that you learn within environmental sciences can be used in policy consulting education journalism and even business sectors next advantage or good thing about environmental sciences is that there's communities and collaboration so this field often fosters tight-knit and ideal realistic communities among peers so you have people who are passionate driven and socially conscious people who think in the same way as you who share your same ideals it's very good to have a community of thinkers who can sit down who can discuss things and who can come up with ideas that work together next we have career flexibility so because it's such a broad field it's not just about lab work and field trips you can branch into environmental consulting you can work in government academia education and more as i've mentioned before there's an increasing green job market in sustainability renewable energy esg reporting climates risk analysis etc your career can be very flexible depending on what skills you are honing and which specializations you choose as somebody who is continuously learning you can move into different fields at different times along your career environmental sciences also has global relevance so environmental issues are universal and knowledge can be applied worldwide making international careers very much possible it helps you understand press issues like environmental justice green transitions and sustainable development so with your skills in environmental sciences and your knowledge you're not limited to just working in one country or continent you can move across continents you can work on a global stage because it is universal environmental problems affect all of us next it's creativity and innovation this is one of my favorite as somebody who is creating content on the internet in environmental sciences you're encouraged to think outside of the box to find sustainable solutions to complex problems having scientists not limited to thinking in a certain way in the textbook way allows you to find certain solutions that somebody would have never thought so you don't look at a problem one dimensionally within the sciences you're exposed to innovation in climate technology sustainable design and restoration methods so because you're exposed to so many different things from so many disciplines you are allowed to branch out next we have digital tools and tech in environmental sciences you can learn gis remote sensing environmental modeling data vi visualization software they're exposed to these different types of tech that can help you analyze or visualize data as a scientist and tech fluency enhances your job prospects in scientific and policy related roles for example if you know data modeling and you can use stuff like 
R, you can use other programs for statistical analyses. You are much better off than somebody who does not know how to use that tech. And lastly, I put this on last because it's like, it's a bit emo. <laughs> Another pro about environmental sciences is that most of the time it's meaningful and purpose driven. So it feels personally rewarding because you're contributing to solving a global issue such as climate change, biodiversity loss and sustainability. A lot of the times the people who work in the field are people who are really passionate about the work that they do or people who are really drawn to working in the environmental science sector. So guys, that is the updated best and worst things about environmental sciences. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any additions that I have not talked about, please put them down in the comment section. I would love to see what you think. And if there's other thoughts you have on the points that I have mentioned, also put those down in the comment section below i would love to interact and hear more from you i hope you enjoyed this video i will see you in the next one bye